Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, Norwen. Uh, I will speak about the situation in the Czech Republic. Uh, this will be a short summary of uh, the VIP paper that uh, uh, Norwen has already introduced. And I prepared uh, this uh, presentation with uh, two colleagues from our, uh, our university. So I'm working in um, uh, at the Czech Technical University in Prague, and I'm also a representative of uh, uh, air tightness, uh, local air tightness, uh, local organization of uh, air tightness testers in the Czech Republic. So uh, uh, let's start. Uh, let's start uh, with the requirements. Uh, the air tightness uh, requirements uh, were introduced into the into the Czech technical standard in uh, 2002. Uh, since this time, we have been using the air change rate at 50 pascals, uh, the N50 value as the air tightness uh, indicator, and the limit values uh, uh, at this time were set uh, in function uh, of the building ventilation system. Uh, as you can see uh, in the in the table on the slide, uh, the standard says that uh, these uh, limit values are universally valid uh, regardless the building type or or the building use. Um, yes, and of course you can see that the most uh, strict requirements uh, apply to uh, to the energy efficient buildings equipped with uh, mechanical ventilation and heat recovery. Note. Please, that uh, these uh, these values are not uh, required, only recommended. So it is not necessary to prove the compliance by means of of testing, in order to obtain, for example, um, uh, building permit. Uh, so uh, although the the testing is not mandatory, the the buildings are tested in the Czech Republic. Why? Uh, first of all, the, uh, the manufacturers of, uh, um, of timber structure buildings and uh, energy efficient buildings are usually aware about the negative consequences of, uh, of uh, the air leakage and uh, they test the buildings uh, in order to be sure that uh, or in order to avoid uh, uh, risks of, uh, of uh, structure damage due to interstitial condensation, for example, and uh, in order to avoid uh, excessive heat losses linked with, uh, with the air leakage. Uh, another reason for testing the buildings may be uh, the check of compliance with uh, the specifications of uh, some building certification schemes like uh, BREEAM or, or, or REED, for example, but Probably the most frequent uh, reason uh, for testing the buildings in the Czech Republic is the check uh, uh, of compliance uh, with uh, requirements uh, which are set in a specific uh, energy performance program. I will speak about this uh, a little bit later. So uh, concerning the number of buildings tested, uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, exact uh, numbers. Uh, exact figures, uh, but uh, we expect, we, based on the, the data available, we can expect that no more than 15% of uh, new residential buildings are, are tested each year in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, concerning the test protocol and the testing procedure, uh, we use, uh, uh, we use uh, the international standard uh, in ISO 9972 uh, completed with some uh, additional rules, um, and as far as I know, um, there are no uh, alternative methods used in the Czech Republic, like uh, pools, for example, or use of uh, building ventilation system. Uh, concerning the the guidelines, um, uh, we have several guidelines spread uh, over several technical documents. For example, uh, the specifications of the energy performance program, New Green sa uh, Savings, uh, provides quite detailed um, guidelines uh, concerning the, the building preparation, the calculation of, uh, 
uh, of reference value and uh, some other details uh, concerning the equipment and the testing procedure, as you can see on this list. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, we have also um, a guideline or, um, or testing pr procedure um, for testing the residential buildings flat by flat if it is not possible uh, to um, test a building as a single pressure zone. Uh, and this, this method uh, applies to uh, residential buildings. Um, it, is, uh, it makes a part of, uh, of a preliminary technical standard, but uh, it's possible to use it for other types of buildings and other purposes as, as well. And uh, this, uh, this, preliminary this preliminary standard uh, specifies um, the sampling method uh, for uh, selection of, uh, of the flats to be tested. And uh, it specifies uh, as well um, the, how to, how to, uh, um, how to um, estimate uh, the whole building uh, air tightness uh, based on the uh, results of individual tests. So uh, this is about the, the testing. I have already mentioned that the most important reason uh, for testing, uh, the most uh, strong driver for air tightness testing is the energy per performance program called uh, Green Savings. Uh, this program started in uh, 2009 uh, and uh, its goal is to reinvest the revenues of the CO2 allowances trade uh, into the, back into the sustainable technologies. Uh, basically, it provides uh, financial support for construction of very, uh, very energy efficient buildings like passive buildings, for example. Uh, so it means that uh, you can, if you prove that uh, you have constructed a passive house, you can obtain a sig significant uh, amount of money. So obviously this is a strong motivation for, uh, for quality improvement and for, uh, for the building in air tightness and for the building air tightness testing as well. Uh, this uh, energy performance program um, is very popular. And with, with no doubts, uh, it has significantly raised the awareness about the energy efficiency and uh, about the building air tightness uh, from the building professionals and their people and stakeholders involved in the construction process. So, uh, in the framework uh, of this, uh, of this uh, um, energy performance program, uh, the air tightness testing is mandatory. Uh, this program, uh, as you can see in the table, has uh, its own air tightness requirements, and uh, you you must prove the comp compliance with the required N50 value uh, in order to obtain the financial su support. Uh, if you fail, you don't obtain the money. So the buildings in the framework of this uh, energy performance program, uh, the buildings are tested according to EN ISO 9972 and the guidelines and according to the guide, supplementary gu guidelines that, uh, that I have uh, mentioned uh, previously. Yes, uh, and uh, one interesting thing is that uh, in order sim to simplify the administration of the, of the program, uh, the results uh, must be submitted uh, in uh, uniform test report. So we have a template, a common template uh, for the for the test report. Uh, yes, uh, uh, this uh, energy performance uh, program uh, has provided a very, very uh, valuable experience uh, for us. First of all, uh, we uh, we have learned that uh, the mandatory testing is uh, is not an obstacle for the market. Maybe we can say on the contrary, uh, because like uh, like uh, in other countries where the uh, testing is uh, is mandatory, 
we have found that uh, the mandatory testing can stimulate the progress and knowledge uh, and the skills of the building professionals involved in in the airtightness. And uh, we found that, uh, that the mandatory testing is uh, a feasible approach, but provided uh, that we clearly defined uh, the the tightness requirements, uh, that we uh, clearly defined the testing procedures, including the, the detailed uh, guidelines going beyond the, the testing standard. It must be also clear uh, who and uh, how will check uh, whether the requirements are fulfilled uh, or not. Of course, we need uh, qualified testers in order to obtain reliable test results. And uh, for this, uh, we need also a program uh, to guarantee the, the competence and the qualification of the testers. We need a competent tester scheme. Well, uh, based on this, uh, this experience, uh, the air tightness uh, experts in, uh, in Czech Republic uh, propose to introduce the mandatory testing, at least for, uh, for several types of buildings. And, um, and uh, I think that uh, significant, uh, significant effort is being made uh, to prepare uh, the necessary uh, technical documents. So, uh, concerning these uh, these documents, uh, we um, we started with uh, with a revision of um, of the air tightness uh, the air tightness requirements. Uh, we will still we proposed it, it's uh, it is the revision of. Uh, uh, the technical standard with the, with the requirements on air tightness, and it is uh, in, in the process. It is not voted yet, uh, but we propose to uh, uh, to still use the N50 value as the indicator. Uh, but we propose to calculate uh, the required value uh, in function uh, individually for each building in function of its. Uh, of its uh, size and uh, of uh, its uh, geometry. So uh, it means that uh, we we fix the the uh, air permeability of the building envelope. We would like to fix the air permeability of the building envelope, and we would like to calculate the required value of uh, N50 uh, based on this uh, on this uh, fixed. Uh, air permeability, which would be the same uh, uh, regardless the size of the building. It means that uh, uh, that for a large building, uh, we would obtain um, smaller, um, smaller uh, limit uh, N50 values uh, than for, uh, for the small buildings, uh, which, is, which is correct, which is okay. Um, Yes, uh, and uh, we uh, we are preparing uh, also uh, a new technical standard uh, with uh, supplementary guidelines uh, to uh, to the um, uh, to the EN ISO 9972. Um, um, its goal is to uh, is to provide uh, complex and and detailed um, detailed testing protocol. Uh, we have combined um, the existing guidelines spread over different documents uh, into one technical standard. So we will have all the guidelines in in uh, one uh, same uh, place. And uh, well, we. Uh, and the result, uh, I think, is the proposal of the standard, which is uh, a quite detailed uh, uh, guideline, uh, which deals with uh, with um, all the weak points uh, of the uh, ISO 9972 standard. And it provides also some some uh, some recommendations or guidance for testing in in special situation 
situations, uh, for example, in strong wind or testing of high rise buildings, very large buildings, very airtight buildings, etc. So, if you are interested uh, in this uh, topic, please uh, uh, read the VIP paper. Uh, so, concerning the, the qualification of the testers, uh, there are basically three options uh, how to become a qualified tester in the Czech Republic. Uh, first, uh, you can become a member of accredited laboratory. Uh, the second option is to become a, a member of a local organization of air tightness testers, and, uh, or you can combine both, uh, both ways. Uh, the local organizations of, uh, of uh, air tightness testers uh, is uh, called uh, is called uh, Association Labrador CZ, uh, and uh, its role is uh, or one of uh, its goals is uh, to supervise uh, the uh, the qualification of uh, of air tightness testers uh, for a long time. It uh, it um, Offered uh, um, um, round robin testing and checks of uh, of equipment for air tightness uh, uh, testers, but uh, since uh, uh, 2021, this organization uh, proposes or provides a new um, competent, competent tester schemes, which is very complex and includes uh, theoretical examination courses, practical examinations, and check of the equipment uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, conclusions for uh, building air tightness. The testing is st still not mandatory in the Czech Republic, uh, but we found, uh, thanks to the energy performance program, that the mandatory testing is a strong driver. Uh, it is a feasible approach, and we, we uh, have prepared the necessary, um, necessary uh, framework, the technical documents. From the technical point of view, uh, everything is uh, almost ready. And uh, now uh, we have to convince the, the state authorities that uh, it's a good way, which will not be easy, certainly, and it will take some time. So, a uh, few words about the ductwork air, air tightness. I will go very quickly through it because uh, this part uh, was prepared by my colleagues. I'm not an expert in the field. Uh, so I be, will be very quick. Uh, concerning the regulations, we have to uh, distinguish between uh, components of ventilation system and ductwork installations. Concerning the ventilation components, they are tested. There are some, uh, some uh, standards and some procedures uh, how to test the, uh, the ventilation system components uh, before uh, the release uh, to the market. These are the standard standardized procedures. Uh, on the other, ha other hand, we have the ductwork installations on site and there is no regulation and uh, the testing is, no uh, is only recommended. There are no uh, required limit values for the air tightness of the, of the, uh, the ductwork installations. There are no specific programs promoting the testing or, or providing financial support. My colleagues point out that there is poor motivation to test the ductwork uh, air tightness because it is not uh, taken into account in energy performance calculations. And they expect that only a very small portion of the installation is, uh, is tested uh, currently. There may be uh, as a part of uh, certification schemes or uh, in order to check the compliance with uh, technical specification in some special cases like uh, laboratory screenings, uh, etc. Concerning the, the air tightness indicator, classification and test, pro test protocol, we use the uh, European standards. If you are interested, you can read uh, more in, in the VIP paper. And uh, to conclude, uh, we can say that uh, there are no requirements concerning the, the duct work. Uh, duct work air tightness in the Czech Republic. Uh, no regulations uh, are foreseen in the future. And in general, uh, the compliance uh, with, uh, with the specifications or requirements is perceived uh, as a matter of contract between the, uh, between the installer and, uh, 
from the customer. And very often, my colleagues say that uh, the mandatory testing is perceived uh, as an administrative obstacle. So it's completely different than the building gate tightness. So uh, this was about the, the situation in the Czech Republic. Thank you for your attention.